The region of Sini Saloon covers 180,000 hectares of land and water broken up into thousands of sandy islands. It's a maze of mangrove swamps and belongs. These meandering ocean inlets have for thousands of years been home to the Neominka Serer people, otherwise known as the Serer Delta people. <laughs> Mariama has spent her whole life in the delta. Every day, she and a group of friends wait for low tide to go and harvest oysters, which they sell for a living. When we're harvesting oysters, we have to be careful because they are sharp and we don't want to cut our fingers. We used to cut off the whole branch, but when you cut off the whole branch, there are no oysters left to reproduce, so now we take a knife and cut them off gently, one by one. It's important that our children and grandchildren can do as our mothers did and as we're doing and continue to make a living here. If we destroy the lot, what will they find here? We must preserve it. Once they've been boiled, shucked and dried, the oysters will be consumed on the spot or sold at the market by Mariama's friends. For thousands of years, shellfish have been at the heart of Serra culture. Their consumption by dozens of consecutive generations and the tons of shells produced by these eating habits have led to a transformation of the landscape of the Saloon Delta. This artificial island emerging from the mangrove swamp is in fact a giant pile of shells 12 hectares wide on which baobab trees have sprung up. Piles of shells, such as this one, served as burial grounds for the Serer people up until the last century. Mariama comes here regularly to pray. This island has been here for thousands of years. It's a very important place in Serra culture. The reason all these shells are here is that the Delta people made a living from fishing for mussels, shellfish and oysters. There are also shells from the fruit of the baobab trees. All these shells served as burial mounds or tombs for our ancestors. All their possessions were placed in their tombs with them. They were buried with all their belongings. For example, their bracelets and pieces of pottery, sometimes even bones. This is where people come to pray for their ancestors. It's a religious place, a place of prayer. It's a very sacred place for us. Mariama has finished praying and hurries home to the village of Bambuga. Mariama has invited her nephew Aliu over 
together with his staff, his coach and his training partner. Aliu works as a farmer for the rest of the year, but during the dry season he makes a living as a wrestler. He and his team cross the region, going from fight to fight, finding lodgings wherever they can. You can leave your luggage here. Here, hold it like this. Aliu has just won the last two tournaments and he has a fight tomorrow on the outskirts of Bambuga. Right, it's ready. I'll put that there. Mariama is married, but she has chosen to live alone with her children and grandchildren. It's an unusual situation in Serer society, where the men, many of whom are polygamous, are traditionally the head of the family. Lower your gaze in front of the adults and stop making a pig of yourself. Eat properly. My husband and his two wives live in their big house. But I live in my house. I'm unusual because I am submissive, but not overly submissive. <laughs> How are you feeling about tomorrow's fight? I'm on form. God willing. I've done all I had to do. Do you plan to train on the day of the match? Yes, tomorrow I'll train before the match. I need to warm up my muscles. Otherwise, I'll make a wrong move. Mm. Small errors happen when you don't warm up properly. Let's go. Go on. Stay on the line. Stay on the line. Right. We've done enough stretching and endurance work. Let's work on your contact. Go on, pick up the pace. That's it! <laughs> the Sini Saloon region is the birthplace of Senegalese wrestling. The wrestlers try to floor their adversary, in other words, to make him fall onto his hands and knees or to force his head, his back or his bottom to touch the ground. Alaji, you need to attack. And Ailu, you need to be tougher. In traditional wrestling, blows are forbidden. What separates the wrestlers is strength, weight, and endurance. I chose this sport because I'm Sarah. Wrestling is in our tradition. That's why I started doing it, and I've made a success of it. That's important to me because I'm a father. You can win sacks of rice and money. I take all that home with me to help my family. I want to be a great champion. I think I have the size and the strength to be successful in the arena. It's my dream to become a professional Senegalese wrestler. The champions of Senegalese wrestling often have a background in traditional wrestling, like Aliu. Their status in Senegal is akin to that of our football stars. Their preparation is mystical as well as physical, with the inevitable visit from the village Marabou before the match.
Hello. Hello. Master, we've come to ask for your blessing for the coming fight. Where will the fight take place? It will take place in the village of Liran, when? today. You brought me luck for my last fight. I beat my adversary in the village of Ngo. Thank you for that. We have great confidence in you. It is I who should thank you for your financial contribution to the construction of our mosque. We are here to help. A marabou is someone who assists people with the help of the surah in the Quran. Hailu can't just go off and fight, he must be protected from bad luck. I'm going to pray for him and give him some purified water with the Quran. That will help him. I'm also going to give him some charms to make him stronger. The marabou has written down some surah and angel's names on a piece of paper. He then folds it to make a charm or talisman. He also gives Aliou bottles of water, purified by the Quran and mixed with roots. Aliou will take what is known as a mystical bath in it later. In Senegal, marabous are both spiritual guides and medicine men. This evening, the men put on a show of bravery, cheered on by local women dressed in their finery and griots singing a litany of praises. The fight started at around midnight. The final will be held at about three in the morning. Aliou, because he won his two previous trophies, is already through to the quarterfinals in his heavyweight category. The winner of tonight's tournament will win two cows. It is the best prize a farmer can get. The fight can last for two rounds of 10 minutes and can go into extra time, after which it will be decided on points awarded by the referee. Aliou's adversary has just blinded him. That's a foul, which will cost him the match after the regulation time. Aliou has won on points. That means he is through to the semi-finals and will be up against an adversary who is much heavier than him. A mountain of muscles in full mystical preparation mode.
I pushed him with all my might, but he wrong-footed me. He toppled me thanks to his weight and I fell to the ground. Obviously it hurts to lose, but that's the law of sport. There has to be a winner and a loser. I'm going to carry on training. And I'll carry on the fight. The rainy season is approaching. Soon, Alio will return to the fields. Another fight will begin to extract enough from nature to feed his family. <laughs> 